Hi, and welcome to the Organize for Success podcast. I'm your host, Kathy McEwen, and today we are talking about productivity and how to become more productive in our busy lives. And I'm super excited to have with us the one and only Ellen Fay, who is a certified productivity leadership coach and an author of a very popular book called Productivity for How You're Wired. Ellen, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to share what I can with your audience to help make their lives better. Yes, and I appreciate that. And I'm sure you're going to help with my life as well. So can you just start by telling us a bit about yourself and how you started helping people become more productive? Sure. That's, it's, you know, we all have our own stories, but my first career is in the hotel business and I work like 100 hours a week for many years, it was just really toxic. And um, when it was time to have kids, I said, I can't keep doing this. My husband was also in the hotel business then. So it was like, we can't have two of us. So I, I mean, this was like the nineties and I had no choice. So I kind of, you know, it was not like today that like there was family leave and things. So I quit and stayed home with the kids a couple of years. And when my youngest was old enough, I said, okay, I'm going to start my own business because I knew if I worked that hard, I was going to do it for myself this time. So I kind of like, what am I going to do? And I decided to become a professional organizer. And what's really interesting, I thought that, that, oh, I'll do it a few years till the kids are older and then I'll go get a real job, right? Well, I had no idea what an amazing profession professional organizing is. And so I started out like a lot of us doing residential organizing as a generalist, doing closets and playrooms and kitchens and garages. But as time progressed, I think a lot of us have found that over the years, you kind of move towards your past experience and what you're good at. And because I worked in business and I had that, my clients would say, oh, can you come help me in my home office? And I started doing a lot of work in people's home offices and helping them with their calendars and with their schedules and setting goals and organizing their iPhones and their papers. Well, even back then there was like, you know, how we integrate our technology, setting up their printers. Well, as time went on, I had the um, knowledge that, wow, I can offer this to business. So I started going into businesses and doing business organizing and productivity. Then around 2009, I said, oh, I think I should get some coach training. This sounds interesting. I just want to learn about this. So in 2011, I became a certified coach. And um, that was, I was just kind of ready to launch that. And then I get this phone call. Can you fill this opening spot on uh, in the U.S., we have the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. So I stepped on the national board. I was there for seven years. I was president for a couple years. And so that kind of took me off. But when I came off the board in 2018, it was like full force on my coaching business. And I was like working a little bit, you know, hands on with people. But 90 percent of my business was coaching. And it was just my, my area was productivity coaching because that's what I really was able to help people do. Then the pandemic came, that was the end of my hands-on clients and I've been on Zoom doing full-time productivity and leadership coaching since. Wow. And it's funny how we can start in one area of organizing and then shift. And because myself as well, when I first started the business, and by the way, you started way before I did. and you started there wasn't a lot of organizers then because it wasn't a lot when I started 10 years ago either so for I you, started in 2001 yes and it was like I'm gonna be a I'm a professional organizer and they would say a what right <laughs> yeah and I might I got this really lucky break um mission organization was one of the very first organizing shows and it was on um HGTV in 2002 it started and they were filming in Philadelphia so I submitted a proposal to do an episode and they picked me. So I was on HGTV in 2003, which gave me some credibility. But that was really when people were starting to say, oh, this is something real. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And when I started, just to really quickly, when I started the business, I wanted it really to help people have more time. 
Like I was thinking, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to help organize your home so that you can spend more time with your family. That was my goal. And then being in the field for a bit, I'm like, that's not what, this is not about tidying up. This is not about tidying up somebody's home. This is no, about people who really struggle with home organization and, and it's so much more involved. So it's funny how both of us kind of went in thinking we're going to go one route and then we end up going another route altogether. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Those opportunities. And the more you learn, the more, you know, and there's a, wow, this is, this is so much more. Then, like you said, my, my first business name was straighten up. And I was like on a, on a step stool in someone's pantry and the babysitter de- came down and said, Oh, do you want me to straighten up to the, to the mom? And it's like, Oh my God, I do so much more than straighten up. And yeah. it was like, it took a few years for me to change my business name, but we do so much more. We change lives. I mean, it's pretty That's interesting. It. It's Definitely life changing for sure. So how do you actually define productivity? What's your thoughts on the actual definition of productivity? Well, I could give you 25, but let's just keep it really simple and say to me, it's Mm -hmm. the intentional use of time. Okay. If you intend to work, let's work. If we intend to relax, let's relax. If I intend to work on project X, let's work on project X. So by being thoughtful, and deliberate and planning and intentional, our lives are better because we're doing what we need to do and want to do. So we're doing what we need to do. So there is time to do what we want to do. Right. Right. So that's so true. And also I was going to ask you, since a lot of my listeners do struggle with home organization and decluttering, when it comes to decluttering and home organizing, how can our listeners become more productive, you know, without that feeling of overwhelm? Um, so overwhelm is pervasive. And I think that's like, you know, our society is, we're, so, we're stressed in so many ways. The, the one tip I can give people is that saying no is the most powerful organizational and productivity tool out there. One of my favorite quotes comes from Warren Buffett. And he says that the difference between successful people and really successful people are that really successful people say no to almost everything. Yeah. You think about that. And for me, so when I wrote the book, I was, the book really helped solidify for me these concepts and it's made me absolutely ruthless about what I say yes to and what I say no to. And the only way I can relax and have any quality of life whatsoever is if I'm ruthless about saying no. And just because I can do something doesn't mean Mm -hmm. I should do something or I'm going to do something. Just because um, it sounds like fun, if I say yes to that, I mean, you know, time is finite. There's only 24 hours in a day. And if I say yes to doing something that I'm just kind of lukewarm about, and that's two hours, well, that's two hours not doing something that's really super important. And I know later we're going to talk about my productivity flow framework, which I talk about in the book. But um, the very first step of the productivity flow framework is to get clear on what's important. So it becomes easier to you of what you're saying yes to. Now, it may be, I'm not saying you don't volunteer in your kid's school or you don't, you know, do something special for work, but I want you to be deliberate and think about, yes, this is helping me achieve my goals or helping me do something for something that's important to me and not just doing it without thought. Remember, this is about the intentional use of your time. Right. And there's nothing worse than wasting our time on things, right, that we don't really want to do. Right. And and I think you're right. A lot of people say yes to everything. And it's like, no, you've got to step back and reevaluate what you're doing and what you're saying yes to. So that's a really good point for sure. Yeah. You know what? I want to make one other point. Brene Brown, who I just think the world of and I've listened and read her books and stuff. She says, when you feel resentment, that's a red flag that you probably should have said no. Ah. So if you're ever doing something and you're feeling like, a little resentful, stop, pause, think about it. And next time, maybe you'll have more gumption to say no. Say no, right. 
That's so true. All right. So let's chat about your book, actually. In chapter yep. one, you talk about... Yeah, it's right behind me. Here we go. Yeah, there it is. I love the cover. I love the color. It stands out. It's And uh, it looks great. So you can see, I have this is a copy I keep on my desk and I have it all marked up because when I coach, I'm going to refer to certain pages. I have some certain fav favorite ones, but thank you. I, um, yeah, I really wanted uh, a cover that um, pulled people in. It just, it does. Thank you so much. It does. Yeah, it does for sure. Um, so in chapter one, you talk about the five pillars of productivity. And so what's important for our listeners to know about those pillars? Well, I think they're like the foundation of productivity. So I do want to spend a couple minutes here. So okay. I'm going to go through all five of them. So the first one is quality of life. So we don't get organized and work on our productivity to say I'm organized or I'm more productive. That's not the point. It's a quality of life issue. By being more organized or by focusing on your productivity, and they're kind of interchanged, you know, it's like maybe we think about organizing stuff and productivity is more time, man time um, managed, I guess. But um, so I'm going to use them inter interrelated. Um, so, but we do it so we have a better quality of life. So remember, we were talking about intentions. So when you're with your family, you enjoy being with your family. When you're with your friends or your partner or whatever you're doing, you enjoy that without that pressure. And that's just, oh, I need to be somewhere else. I need to be doing something else. So by focusing on doing some a few things to get clear on how to be most productive, that's going to feed down so you have a better quality of life. Right. The next pillar is one size does not fit all. So this is really the crux of the book. And I believe this is what makes my book so different than so many books out there. So many books out there, the author basically says, this is what worked for me. Now you go do it. It'll work for you. No. Well, what I've learned from working in you too for all these over 22 years is that everyone is different. And what works for you, Kathy, may not work for me or one listener may not work for another or a partner may not work for, you know, the other partner in a family or a boss. I love the the boss. I had one guy call me and says, I want you to teach my team my system. I didn't take the piece of business because I knew that that wasn't going to work. So basically the book takes you through a, a couple little um, quizzes, you know, little exercises to help you get in touch with who you are and your personality and helps, then we adapt, we um, take that concept of, of how much structure you need and adopt it to all the tools I talk about in the book. So what works for you, we're going to understand that and then help you see how to apply it. So that's the second pillar. Third pillar, if it's not easy, it's too hard. I bet you know this. If you make your systems too complex, what happens? You don't do it. Nobody sticks with it. They implode. You spend all your time working the system. Doesn't so work. people say, this system is so easy. How can it work? And I say, it's so easy. It has to work. So, and I, you know, I'm really detailed in the book. I give really step-by-step -step detailed way for you to do it. But then when you do it, you step back, you say, well, okay, so now I just do these five things and I can make it happen for me. Um, I do recommend like, you're, this is not a book you're going to sit down and read in a weekend. Give it some time, sit with it because you, I want you to go in and practice these things. Okay. If it's not easy, it's too hard. Next one is not all work is equally important. So I am sure you've talked about Pareto's principle or the 80-20 rule before. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. So your listeners are probably familiar with that. But basically in a productivity, so like in an organizing sense, you use 20% of your things 80% of the time. And we want those things really close to us. And the things we use less often, we either pack away or we donate or we whatever. They're not as close to us, but like that stuff we want to rip the stuff we use the 20% of the shoes 
the 80 the 20 percent of the shoes that we use 80 percent of the time you need to be in and out of you don't have to like climb up on a step stool to get right so how that relates to time to productivity and time is that you can get done 80 percent in 20 percent of the time but wow. that last 20 percent is going to take 80 percent of the time so there is work that is important that you put 100% effort in. So let's say it's going to take you 10 hours to get to 100%. It may only take you two hours to get to 80%. I want everyone to start thinking about their work. Is this 100% worthy? Or is 80%, which we still in school say is above average, is good enough. Is yeah. it for this draft, this email, this note is a good enough. Now the book, I promised you I made a hundred percent. The cover I made 120%. I mean, I put tons of time into some of these things. That was deliberate. It was intentional. But when I write emails, Kathy, I promise you they're not a hundred percent because I'm going to do it in two minutes and 10 minutes. Because if I made 10 minutes for my email, all I would do all my life is email. Right. I don't want them to say at my funeral, Ellen did fabulously writing emails. That's not the point. So right. think about your work. What is good enough at 80% and that I could do in a fifth of the time or do it does it, is it really worthy of five times more time? That's a really go good ahead. point. Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. That's a really Sorry. good point. And that's a hard one for perfectionists. Perfectionists yeah. want everything to be just perfect. So they're trying to put a hundred percent into everything. Right. So, um, yeah. well, I mean, we've we've been like our society, our school systems have really done a number on us. You know, all we wanted was that 100 percent and a smiley face. And, yeah. you know, if there was a red mark, it really we took that personally. Yes. So our education system set us up mm -hmm. for this perfectionism, which yeah. in business and in life, you know, like if we talk about in in the home, I can't clean my own house because I would want to do it perfectly. I want every dust piece of dust in the corner. Nobody has time for that. So I let somebody else do that. I do my own business accounting. It's my trade-off, right? But like, it doesn't have to be, cleaning the floor doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Writing an email doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. Um, hanging something up on the hanger does like if we go for perfect, we're going to spend all our lives just doing unimportant stuff. Good point. Very good point. Okay. My last pillar is plan your work and work your plan because that is how you are intentional. Instead of putting out fires, you are thinking ahead. And I had one client, Maggie said this to me, it'll go down and it was phenomenal. She said, I used to think I didn't have time to plan now I realize that it is the ultimate expression of self-care. Mm. So if we're going to really live the life we want, all of these things I've been talking about, make time to plan. Good point. I love that. Actually, that's a really good one. Absolutely. So that is so interesting. And I can't wait to, you know, we're going to talk later, but you have to let everyone know where we can get your book. Um, actually, you can just let us know now. So is it on sure, Amazon? It is on Amazon. It is the one and only place. It's just the way it goes these days. Yeah. You know what? Um, I think my book coach says we're going to put it to go wide. I don't know where we are with that. So maybe Barnes and Noble and things. But for now, go on Amazon. You could either uh, search Ellen Fay or Productivity for How You're Wired. It'll pop right up there. It's ranking really well in work-life balance. I think we're still in the top 10 on that. And um, a few, a few things like that. So um, it's there and just go pick it up. You could get it on Kindle or um, paperback. I will eventually uh, do an audio book on it. I'm going to give this a little bit more time and then probably maybe in the fall or next year, early next year, I'll do it as an audio book. But now we've got either Kindle or paperback. Perfect. That's great. Yeah. Well, it's easy. Hop on Amazon. It's the best way to get a book. Nowadays, it really is. You know, and I know, and when you think about the investment you make in a book, even if you don't read the whole thing, if you read the parts that appeal to you, 
you know, it's like a 10th of what an hour of coaching costs or, you know, there's, it's like there, this is a great, it's a great value. So I think it's worthwhile. Yeah. And this is the kind of book that, you know, you don't always read it before you go to bed and fall asleep. This is one that you need to sit down, get your pen out or pencil, highlight certain things that, you know, really catch your eye, put your little tabs in there so you can reference back to it because it really is a very educational type book, which is, which is. And if you like to live, to read your books on ebook and not buy a book, there's, um, and even if you buy the book, there's online time tools that the link is in the copy for. So you can go online and see some of the charts that are in the book in color, because it just helps to see them in color. And then there's worksheets you could print out. And there's also a a document you could work in to execute some of the exercises in the book. Awesome. That's great. It's definitely a resource that everyone should run out and get for sure. Um, You say planning is so important. I think we talked a little bit about that. Is there anything else you want to um, say in regards to planning ahead? Yeah. You know what? It's just basically when people call me and they tell, and I said, so tell me what's going on when Mm -hmm. I talking to a potential new client um they basically they're feeling like i can't get ahead um i'm drinking from a fire hose and because they don't have time that they're not taking the time to plan which is being proactive they're being reactive so when we talk about the productivity flow flip framework we built in planning and not a lot of planning. I'm not asking people to spend hours and days, but maybe five minutes once, five minutes every day to think, to really be intentional. What is the most important work I do today? And then a, a half hour or an hour once a week to look at everything, get the whole picture, kind of reset, recalibrate and launch for the next week. And when you invest in yourself to do that, all of a sudden you say, oh, I don't have to stress out this weekend. I can really relax because I'm okay. Or you know what? If I work two hours Saturday morning, then I can relax the rest of the weekend because you know where you stand. I say there's no scary monsters hiding in your email or in a pile of papers because you know where you stand. So that's like that quality of life issue. So that's what planning does for you. It helps with the overwhelm and it helps you say yes to the right things. Right. And you mentioned your productivity flow framework. Did you want to go into a little bit more detail on that? So So, how it works. Great. I'd love to. So the first section of the book is understanding yourself. And the second section is creating your systems, the productivity flow framework. The third section is application to different things like working hybrid or email or leadership, even some leadership things. But we're going to talk about the framework and there's five steps to it. And um, that's what the whole second section is about. And that's a lot of the worksheets are. So the first step of this is to set your goals and intentions. Now, remember we talked about, I mentioned earlier in the one size fits all structure preference. So I kind of give you, walk you through a way for you to assess how much structure you need to do your best work and be your best self. And I've defined that as low structure, moderate structure and high structure. So for all of these exercises I talk about, so when we talk about setting goals and intentions, I provide, here's a template you use if you need low structure. Here's a template you use for moderate structure. And here's a template you use for high structure. So wherever you fall, we're creating a tool that fits you and how you're wired. So what that goal and intention exercise does is helps you get clear on what's important, what you're saying yes to, helps you commit to those. And then when something else floats in, you can stop and you could say, if I say yes to this new shiny penny or this new idea, I'm going to be saying no to what I decided was most important. So am I willing, is that opportunity so phenomenal or do I just want to wait maybe till next year to work on it? So this is what helps us do our most important work is by defining our most important work. It just brings that clarity and this idea of, I am committed to doing this for now. 
Then the second step is I call a time map. And that is, um, I want you, it's not, people think it's time blocking, but it's absolutely the, the farthest thing from time blocking. It's an exercise to help ensure that you have time to do everything that you want to do, including all those things that we just put on your goals and intentions exercise that you told me were important. So we, it, you could either think of it as a vision board. Did you ever do a vision board where you kind of cut out pictures of what you wanted your life to look like? Absolutely. Or, right. So you can say, I want this, right? So you're envisioning what you want. It helps bring it to life. Or you could, other people like to think of it as a budget for their time. I have 168 hours every week, 24 times seven. How do I want to use that? Just like you can say, I have X dollars available every month. How do I want to use that? We're going to do the same thing with your time. And we kind of block it out. And the book explains how to do this. And it gives the worksheets and the um, time tools show you, the spreadsheet shows you, you can do this yourself. And it says, if you like low structure, do less detail. If you like high structure, you want more detail and moderate structure. I give tips for all of that. But the best story I can give you for this is this woman who hired me, who had gotten a new job, just had a second baby, and she's hired me to learn how to figure out how to do everything she was doing, plus adding in all this other stuff. So we did the time map exercise. And by the end, we put everything she wanted to do in there. And there was only one problem. She could only sleep from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. That's not going to work. <laughs> so, but only when she saw that, did was she able to step back and say, oh, see, if I would have told her, oh, that's not going to work, she would have said, oh, yes, it is. I can make it work. I can make anything work because we think we can't because we think time expands, but it doesn't. It's finite. So when she said that, she goes, oh, well, maybe the babysitter can prep dinner. And mm -hmm. you know what? I'm going to hire someone to clean my house and my husband's going to do the laundry. Now she still made time. She wanted her kids to be bilingual and she was wanted to spend time working with her older child on their second language. And she wanted to be sure she was there to put the kids to bed and to go to PTA events or meet with, you know, and still have her job. But she stopped. She was able to see that certain things were less important and make those decisions so she could actually do the important things. So that's the idea of that exercise. Outsourcing. Outsourcing yeah. is what yeah, she, ended up you know, doing, right? she ended up having to outsource, even if it was to her husband or her babysitter or, you know, because we can't do it all. We just can't. So right. outsourcing to other people when you can is definitely a big help. Or learning to say no, like a lot of my clients, I want to take this certification and I want to take this class. I don't want to take an art class. Well, when we do the time map, they say, you know what? I only have time for one thing at a time. This year, I'm going to do the art class and next year I'll do the certification or right. vice versa. But they see what is possible to yeah. do everything they want to do. If right. they want to have date night with a partner once a week, then they need to maybe not work till eight o'clock every night, right? So we yeah. kind of talk through all of those challenges. And so they really can be um, intentional, planful, thoughtful, and have the life they want. Right, that's awesome. Okay, step three, mm -hmm. this um, five steps, is uh, creating your essential structures. So you can look at that time map and pull out what I call your essential structures are your winning conditions are the yeses and guardrails are the no's. Those are the things you're saying yes to and the things you're saying no to. Other people call them boundaries. But the second I use the word boundaries with my clients, they shut down. I have good boundaries. What are you talking about? Or I don't understand what boundaries are. So we create from the time map a list of winning conditions. It could be I sleep eight hours a night. It could be I exercise three times a week or I make time to meal plan so I could achieve my healthy weight goal or 
I, um, I, I had one client who didn't mind working after his kids went to bed, but one of his winning conditions was to be home, have dinner with his family at least four nights a week. And then after the kids went to bed, if he needed to do more work, that was fine. Um, for me, like one of my winning conditions is I don't talk to people before nine in the morning because I need to take care of my email, my clients, my work, you know, like my, my business and my business. So when I hop on a coaching client call with a client at nine in the morning, I am a hundred percent focused on that. So those are my yeses. And then like no's might be, um, I say no to saying yes without sleeping on it. Or I say no to working seven days a week. I, you know, Oh my, if I need to work a little bit one weekend day, that's okay. So you come up, you look at your time map and you extract those essential structures. And then the next pillar, the next um, step of the framework is uh, priority, doing your priorities task list. And that's organizing your to-dos by priority. And this is a new system I came up with. It's a little bit... Uh, Eisenhower Quadrants, a little bit, David Allen, a little bit, this one, a little bit. You pull from all these things that you've worked with people all these years that don't work. And this works because it's kind of like a conveyor belt of tasks being fed to you at the right time. And it's a method and not a tool. So we are always saying, what we're always like, oh, what's the next calendar I buy? Or what's the next app? It's not about the tool. It's like learning a method to organize the things you need to do, your to-dos. So, um, and I show in the book, like many, many different tools you can use it with, but it's like say, here's what I do today. Here's what I do this week and everything else is sooner or later. So you're focusing on doing the right things at the right time. That's good. Have That's you seen that with your, with the people you've worked with, Kathy, like they're like all these systems don't work and they just keep yeah. buying planner after planner. Yes, exactly. Or their to-do lists are so long that they're overwhelmed, right? Because they're starting a list, but it's just like three, two pages long. And then they're just like, so overwhelmed. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, what happens is you put like the same thing on that list in four different places and it makes it feel like you have four times more to do than you have to do. <laughs> so this gets rid of it. I don't want you to rewrite all the time. You could do it on paper. You could do it on the spreadsheet. Um, lots of different ways, but it just, you don't have to rewrite all, it's kind of a living, breathing document that is yeah. always ongoing. So we talk about that. And the last pillar is planning, uh, daily and weekly planning, and it helps you learn the routines you need to do to put all the other parts of the framework on, on autopilot, like to build that habit. So mm -hmm. I'll have my clients work those checklists. We create their custom checklists based on how they're wired and the book walks you through that too. Um, but then I have them do use the checklists. And after maybe a month, kind of gets, oh, I know what I'm doing and they can fade away from it and maybe go check in on it. But it's how you create the habit and learn it. It's by using the checklist. And then all of a sudden it becomes integrated into their routines. Like I said, like five minutes a day to identify your important tasks for today. Some people take 10 minutes. It depends what they do, what they choose to do. And then the weekly planning, I would say an hour, half hour, if if you don't like update your email, but whatever, we customize that to you. But those two elements are critical and that's the planning. So there's awesome. your framework. Well, that's great. And um, it sounds like there's so many resources in this book with checklists and everything in there that it's going to make it so much easier, uh, your quizzes and everything that's in there. So uh, it's going to be, you know, very, very helpful for so many people. So get out there and get her book. <laughs> so Ellen, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to hop on and help us here with productivity, Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. And I hope all of you, um, your lives are just a step or two better because of the information in the book. They will be. <laughs> I guarantee it. Thank you, Ellen. Thanks, Kathy.